If you are familiar with the 1940 film Fantasia, then you have probably heard of this tune. Yes, I'm talking about the Sorcerer's Apprentice from Paul Dukas. And this version that I am playing is come courtesy of this wonderful book here, where I have used the, basically I've taken their score and made it a lot better. But the accompaniment is where you get this is the one I used here. And it's a wonderful collection of various movie themes for cello. You can purchase it linked in the description below. And my teaching version here, you can purchase via my website. And yes, I take basically what they've written and made it a lot better. Because today, you are going to learn how to play The Sorcerer's Apprentice on your cello. The bowing for this piece right here is really straightforward, spiccato style. You're going to play with a nice bouncy bow throughout the entirety of the piece. And very close to the talon area right here in what I call the point of equilibrium. That's right, you should be able to balance your bow almost instantly on your finger. And that right here will give you the most controlled part. And so this area, this zone, is what I suggest you play this part with. And so when you play all these notes, you're playing very much thickness into the string with a nice and brisk bounce. And that's carried out throughout the majority of this piece. You are playing with that style. Sometimes you will play with the legato style, but most of the time it is spiccato. I want to bring your attention to measure 94, which is just about right here. And, and it's that bow stroke right here. It's an up, lift off, lift off, like that. Everything else is very straightforward. I did change the articulation right here in measure 116. It's on the string, but that's just a little detail of fingering right there. You start here, measure 134 in the sixth position. This is an octave higher than what is in the original part. And I use a harmonic for that. And then... And that's how you want to play. Again, on the string, very straightforward. And But the little lift off, you have after both of these really nice long legatos, like that. And of course, a downstroke on that high D right there. Nothing else is to talk about very much, except for the fact that we need to talk about these fingerings. And in order to do so, this is when I switch to my teaching electric cello. Now we have the teaching cello available. I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to like this video if you haven't done already, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content, and turn on notifications if you like to be up to date with all of the content on my channel. I have also started memberships where my members get exclusive content that is not available on the public channel. So consider becoming a member of Cello Coach. And lastly, a lot of the scores by which I'm using, for instance, this one from this book here, are revised and made just better by me. And they're available via my website. So go to cellocoach.com if you want to buy any of my scores, my teaching scores with all my color-coded bracket system, which we're going to get into right now. And let me tell you, this piece is going to call for a lot of positions. First off, the basics. First position is right here, three dots. Fourth position is right here, three dots. And the first harmonic is right here. So let's get right into learning how to play the fingering of The Sorcerer's Apprentice by Paul Dugas. So I'm going to go piece by piece, first from the beginning of where we play up to measure 34, which is right here to save time, because there's a lot to talk about. First, when you play, I option to go to the fourth position when you start the melody. And then after the fourth position, you shift to the upper third position, back to the fourth position, going back and forth between the fourth and the upper third position, and then ending all of this right here on the 
C string, the fourth string in the fifth position. You can certainly use your third finger instead of a fourth finger. I optioned the fourth finger because it stayed better in tune with my sort of anatomy, and we're all anatomically different. All of this is played on the C string, the fourth string. This is what this Roman numeral four means, is all of the notes following are on the fourth string. So you play 18, 19, 20, all the way into this until you hit 26. You're officially on the third string, fourth position, or the Ds. Then coming into the first position, first position does not have a colored bracket. For a brief moment, you want to play here in the lower third position to make this extension and shift to the fourth position easier, that octave jump easier. And then it's first position to extended first position into 36. So open strings. And then here's in your fourth position. Shift, half step back. Back up. Half step back. Back up. Then up to the fifth position. Now I option the fourth finger, you can certainly use your third finger right here. So I'm gonna do that right now, starting in this measure right here, measure 18. But the fourth finger is gonna be used for that C sharp. So you're gonna shift back right there. And I option to do it all in the fifth position. So that blue colored bracket right here is all in the fifth position. Fifth. Like the shape of that and on acoustic or electric cello is great and then fourth position ending the line first position and this is where we do the jump makes the jump easier to the fourth position and then ending in the extended first position Continuing in measure 35, we are in the half position here to then the first, and then I option to play this on the third string. And the reason why we're in the fifth position on the third string is because following we have this D flat extended fourth position in measure 40 and 41. So it makes it a lot easier if your hand is already up there, and I'll demonstrate that shortly. So you go oscillating in between the fifth position and the fourth, back to the fifth and the fourth, a lot of this stuff here. And then fifth to the fourth position all through here, and then going to the second string and the extended lower third position right here. Going into the next measure, and we are going to do an extended second position. This is extended second right here two extended third, lower third right here, two extended lower second, shifting to the half position right here, and then to the whatever position you choose for the Cs. So download your part if you want to know what's going on, or simply follow in the video. Here we go. We're in half position here on the second string. Then first position up to the and really use your fingers like that and extend back to the first, uh, the first finger on the E flat and stay in this extended fifth position. And keep that hand open, shift back, back up. It works actually quite nicely when it's sped up. Shift to the fifth position after that. And then fourth, fourth on the second string. And then expand that hand into a open lower third position for the rest of it. Keep that hand open for this part right here, the oscillation in between the extended second and extended third. Back. And then close that hand up, half. And then I option to play the third finger on the C natural, but you can do as you wish. I'll play without stopping now.
And now we're going to go into the next series of measures. Three sixty-five. I want to talk about measure sixty-five here. We are using the classic chromatic scale pattern, so it's three two one three two one one two three one two three in reverse. <laughs> The next part of it is very much like the beginning. There's no variance except for this extended fourth position here we have in measure 84, 85, right here, it's extended fourth, and same thing happens twice there. You then go up to the fourth position on the third string, this is fourth position right here, and then to the upper third position afterward in measure 93. Ending 94, 95, 96 in the upper third position, and then starting the piano section in extended second position, shifting to the first, and then doing this very clever, what I thought was clever, upper second position, using the open string to shift your hand to the half position here, and then going back up. After that, it's very much extended first position throughout all of measure 110, 11, 12, 13, 14, even up to right here. And toward the end of the page, we're looking at the lower second position coming twice, of course, extend its first position to lower, lower second, and then finally ending the page in lower third position. So I'll play all of this without stopping from the chromatic down to here. Again, if you want to follow better in your music, you can certainly purchase this score right here, or you can download my specific score on my website. flew by super quick, but if you know your positions and you know everything, then it's going to become quite clear. The top of the next page is in fourth position from all of the top, 124 up to the 130s, and then I do something quite clever with my fingers here. I put my hand into the thumb sixth position because you want to have this whole step replaced with that whole step there. It goes by so quickly, so that's why I optioned to do this. And that last note is definitely on the D string right here, and you can even harmonic that if you find it to be more clear. And then we're moving back to the first position, and then just jumping up for that D right there, hoping and praying you get it. How would you conveniently, or moreover, how would you confidently shift from like that. How would you do that? There's an easy, easy exercise for you right here, and it's I call them our octave slides. So you start on the first finger, and then you octave slide up slowly, and you put your thumb, of course, on the harmonic A. And you have those other fingers ready. You do it with the second finger. Slide it all the way up until you hear. And all the way back. Third finger, C sharp to C sharp. Now the C sharp here is going to be the second finger you replace at the very end. And the fourth finger is going to go to the third finger, D to D. 
And so building this shape, building this shape right here is something you're going to develop over time. But you start by developing a confidence and shifting to that position. And that right there is just practice. <laughs> There's no secret about it, just practice, that's all. You just practice. Right, let's continue going. Um, we're continuing going, and I optioned to raise the octave here in 141. So we're here on the D string. <laughs> That is lower third, upper second, lower third, upper second, no extensions. And then fourth. And that's a clever thing. I'm really proud of this little clever move I did. We're doing one, four, two, two, and this is what I'm talking about exactly right here. This is my little clever bit. This is two right here. That two is my little clever bit. I'm very happy about that, okay? So. Why? Because I needed this to this F sharp to be in tune and this extension back, but it's further than extension. It's actually a massive little jump. So it's an oscillation. So right there. And you just want to go as far back as your hand goes. So at least one of those notes is going to be in tune when you do that. Hence why we do that shift right there. It gets more clever. And we have this extension between the F G sharp and the G sharp here. That octave extension you should be able to do. And then shifting here, which I find to be as good as it gets. I changed the notes a little bit for this teaching version because it was just easier to read. <laughs> but um, the composer didn't write those exact notes. He wrote the enharmonic difference. But anyway, little details. C sharp here and then shifting to lower third. And then here shifting to fifth position, ending this. Then upper third. And I option for the upper third to lower second non extension. Plus fours do not mean extension in my, my pedagogy, they just mean a precise digit in a precise location, which is between the first and fourth position. Remember that. And that happens throughout measure 165 up to 169. Lower second, back to upper third, back to upper third, open A, half, chromatic, here, upper second, half, up to upper second. Ending the stringendo and extended fourth into assez long. And you can play that with whatever harmonic right there, but really have your finger solid. Thank you for watching my video today on how to play The Sorcerer's Apprentice from Paul Ducasse. And yes, this particular version was inspired by movie themes for cello, linked in the description below, where you can get the accompaniment. You can get downloaded MP3s, but today I'm old and I actually have a CD that came with the book. So purchase the book for the backing track and go to my website and download this teaching version so you have a good understanding of what's going on because this takes place on three different pages. And if you like the content of this particularly teaching video, well, happy Halloween to you. Thanks for watching this long into this wonderful, wonderful song. I hope that you enjoyed learning with me. I hope that you subscribe to my channel. I hope that you comment and leave me constructive criticism and lots of approbation. <laughs> Yes, I'm super happy to share this with you. I have been wanting to do this for many, many years, and I absolutely love this song. I love it so much. Ever since seeing it as a child uh, on, in Disney, it's always been associated with Mickey Mouse. So yeah, I'm really happy to share it with you. So from my own personal 
admiration and passion for Disney and classical music and Halloween all coming together in a little video for you guys. Sharing the love of cello with everyone out there in the world, the love of classical music, the love of Disney, and also Halloween. So happy Halloween to you, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your morning, day, afternoon, evening, or night as you travel along your own journey of music discovery. Happy Halloween once more, and God bless. Nah. It's hard to do my outro. Wherever you are in the world, and yeah, happy Halloween. Enjoy it. Trick or treat. Bye.